Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum. This is training vlog number 15. We're gonna start out with some questions from you guys, then some form checks from you guys, and then we'll talk about myself and Dr. Baraki. This is training from Monday of this week, which was the 23rd of July. Uh, as always, stay tuned to the end of the video to learn how you can submit your form checks and questions to us. Thanks for tuning in. Let's start out with question number one. Question number one is from Luis. He says, I started weightlifting about five months ago for the first time and have been steadily progressing throughout that time. My question being in regards to elbow placement on the low bar squat. I've been told many times to point my elbows downward and in attempting to do so, I feel like my balance is thrown off. Does the benefits of elbow placement outweigh my feel of balance in the descent? Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's talk about thing number one. Thing number one is what is the correct elbow placement in the low bar back squat? The correct elbow placement uh, is going to depend on your grip placement. Ideally, we'd want a neutral wrist if you're using a false grip or uh, uh, you're not wrapping your thumb around the barbell. But if you do wrap your thumb around the barbell, you'll actually have a bent wrist. And the elbow position is not necessarily going to be down or up. I don't know if that's an accurate descriptor. Rather, I would want to have your uh, upper arms or your humerae in line with your torso in, in line with your trunk. Um, you could theoretically say that the elbows would be down in that position, even though they wouldn't be like tucked under the barbell. Uh, they just wouldn't be jacked up to the, uh, to the back of the lifter. So raising your elbows too much like that, particularly on the way down um, or, or the way up can actually cause the thoracic spine to round and that can cause some bar path issues. So we will cue people to tuck their elbows down into their sides. Um, as far as how this directly affects your balance, that is a unique sort of form issue and I would have to see video to see what's going on and you may be over correcting your elbows by pushing them forward and trying to stay too upright and then that's going to limit your ability to bend over which you will bend over uh, in a low bar back squat more than you would a high bar squat or a front squat. So what should you do? Well, I would really fix your elbows if they're going up like that and I have an article that I'll link below about the elbow problem, so to speak. And then uh, if you're losing balance, then I think that's an unrelated, potentially unrelated form issue, unless you're uh, interpreting the cue incorrectly. So it's hard to say. Um, ideally, again, your elbows and upper arm would be in line with your torso during the descent, not flapping up like that. Don't do that. The, you're just trying to trap the bar in, that, uh, in the correct position and then uh, you would bend over to the appropriate amount, which is gonna be dependent on your anthropometry uh, and the bar placement. And uh, so that's the answer to question number one. Question number two is from Joel Patera. He says, I'm a dietetics uh, student, as well as an underweight male seeking to gain weight. He's 5'10", mid 170s. Uh, he's asking about fiber, okay? So he's sa he says, I've run into the issue of satiety. My expenditure is fairly high. I maintain my weight at 4,250 to 4,500 calories. And even at that, I'm ending the day looking like I'm expecting soon. Okay. It's common knowledge that fiber intake should correlate with calorie intake, especially considering cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, general uh, laxation. Okay. As well as the association of low fiber intakes with colorectal cancer. Uh, knowing this and even adjusting my fiber intake to 10 grams per thousand calories, I still find myself being uncomfortably full every other day. From your viewpoint, would it be an intelligent move to lower my fiber intake so that I'm able to maintain a calorie surplus without feeling like I'm in my third trimester? Or should I keep my intake static and attempt to find a different way around? So the fiber intake recommendations right now are 30 to 35 grams a day. That's from the American Heart Association, World Health Organization, stuff like that. It's not necessarily on a per calorie basis unless you're eating far less calories than the uh, you know 2,000 or 2,500 you see on the back of the label. Um, if you're eating far less than that, then the fiber intake goes down. Now the average fiber intake in America is about 15 grams per day. So people are well under that 30 to 35 gram uh, range. I think that you should cap your fiber intake at 30 to 35 grams, given your calorie intake. And you should potentially start to identify maybe some trigger foods that cause you to feel like what sounds like bloating or uh, being uncomfortable in general. Um, I don't see any reason to have super, super high fiber foods make up the bulk of your diet. 
Although I still think that eating some vegetables and fruits and whole grains should be in uh, any healthy diet, including yours. Now, that doesn't mean you need to get 15 or 20 grams of fiber per meal. And you may find that if you switch to something like white rice, which doesn't have any fiber to try to get some of your carbohydrates in, that would be a good move. Now, also while gaining weight, it's okay to have things like ice cream and, you know, cereals and uh, stuff like that, that may, uh, that may be less um, sort of nutrient dense and things that may be less, you know, fiber dense, but have more calories. You know, most folks can fit those into their diet anyway, even if they're on a calorie restricted diet, but you having the benefit of having a high calorie intake, uh, you know, you can do those a little bit more, uh, you can do that a little more freely than, than other folks. So my recommendation would be to increase the calories, um, make sure you're logging stuff so that you're actually taking in the calories that you're reporting and just cap your fiber 30, 35 grams a day. Um, I wouldn't try to go any higher than that. And that may uh, uh, require you to actually pull out some fiber rich foods, but I wouldn't eliminate um, um, foods that have fiber in them entirely, particularly vegetables, fruits, whole grains, stuff like that. So. Okay, we're gonna hop into the videos now. Video number one, this is from Adam Marenghi. He's squatting 275. All right. So we'll go right into this. We'll check the walkout. Looks pretty good. Gaze looks good from here. Elbows look good from the start. That looks borderline high to look at it again that one looks okay it does look like the knees are sliding forward at the bottom yeah like all the way down i would get the knees further forward and just hold them there the other thing is i can't tell stance width from here but kind of looks a little narrow just a little bit yeah yeah let's watch that again all right so we're gonna watch the walkout again we're just gonna look at depth Yeah, you're on your heels there because the toes were up. That depth looks okay. Yeah, it kind of does look like your back's unlocking a little bit because you're trying to stay a little too vertical um, for your knee travel. So you have two choices. You can either send the knees further forward uh, earlier, you know, so you don't have to give up your back at the bottom or you can bend over more. Yeah, I mean, that's and you pitch forward a little bit on the way up. So that's what I would do. All right, next video is from Tom Goldsack. This is a 155 kilo bench press. All right, here we go. This is a big, tall guy, so the bench does look low, even though it kind of looks like an ER rack spinoff. Yeah. Yeah, the hips aren't, the butt's not leaving the bench, so that's okay. But, you know, I think for a big, tall guy, I'd widen your grip. I'd move your feet further back behind you so you could try to get a bigger arch. And then I would just try to tighten everything up. I, I don't, I just want to see you moving less under the barbell. That's what I would do. All right. Last video is from Jason Jackson. I think it's 405. Cause it looks like a 35 pound plate outside of three plates and then another 10. All right. And shins to the bar. Yeah, I would extend more at the top. Stand up tall. Put your chest out at the top. The back looks relatively okay. But the bar is forward in the middle of the foot for sure. I mean, that's forward. Still forward. Yeah, it's just light. So that deadlift is far too light for you. It's just the barbell is forward in the middle of the foot. So you need to raise your hips up a little bit. Pull the bar back. Okay. And go straight up your legs. Stand up tall at the top. All right, to Baraki. This is 590. Good walkout, gets tight. Yeah, I mean, the descent was a little tempo, you know? You could bounce better out of there, but I don't really have anything else to say about that. This is what, 470? Notice the tempo on this one, see? Yeah, much better. Get a gets a better bounce. Second one had even better bounce than the first one. So the idea is, if you're gonna you know do these things for reps, you 
would uh, want to attack that first that first rep. That one, the hips sh shot back a little bit out of the bottom, just a little bit, but. All right, this is 600 for three. That first rep pushed forward slightly. Second rep, still a little forward. Let me just watch the plates. Yeah, just kind of inched forward a little bit there. I mean, I'd still, I, don't, I know he wasn't happy with that, but um, the bar just went a little forward on each rep. And uh, I would uh, tell him to hold the bar in place and not kick it forward just a little bit. It's just a little bit, just enough to make it feel harder than it should have been. All right, now it's yours truly. All right, so here's 500. Uh, yeah, again, since I had to do high bar for a while due to that hand injury, this is the first time low bar in anywhere uh, over 500. I would have kept my chin, my chin down on that one, but easy day. So the setup today was uh, one, at one at seven, and then uh, do six reps uh, at about 72% for six sets. So I ended up doing 405 beltless. Yeah, I'd like to keep my head in place. Should have done that. And I probably would have chalked my back because it's super sweaty. But depth is good. I'm looking at my heel on my left shoe. I actually caught this. This is the first set. So I uh, widened my stance, but still. Yeah, I see it on this one. Would have liked to widen my stance so I could keep my heels down. All right, so this is 365 bench. So again, the setup on this one was a uh, single at eight and then six by six again at uh, this time was 74, or sorry, 70, 72% again, yeah. So that one wasn't heavy enough. So I went up to 385. Leah Lutz with the spot. I do like wearing my belt on this because it makes me feel like I can get a better Valsalva. Um, and at meets too, I feel like it may uh, cut down on the amount of back fatigue that I get, which may be a placebo effect during the meet, but I don't want my back to cramp up on a bench press, you know? Yeah, so that's probably a little lighter than an eight and a flying five pound weight. There you go. All right, so there just went down to 315. Took the wrist wraps off just so I could, you know, work on my, my grip. And I use my wrist wraps fairly judiciously, mainly because, uh, they make me feel better and I like enjoying my training, <laughs> but uh, I want to do these on short rest so I could get out of the gym. So I ended up doing six sets of six there. And then my third exercise was wide grip bench press. So this is second finger on the ring. Um, I do like this, you know, people are like, oh, you don't do close grip that much. Um, I don't program close, close grip bench press that much for people who have a close grip competition bench, which is, so I'm playing with the more wide grip stuff. It just, you know, I am scared that it's gonna tear at my shoulders. Uh, but so far, so good. So, and when I say tear at my shoulders, you know, people are like, oh, don't nocebo yourself. It's just, you know, historically, I haven't had great results with wide grip bench when I've done them real, real heavy for real, real low reps. But in fairness, I haven't ever conditioned myself to be able to tolerate that stress. So that kind of makes sense. So I'm keeping it in as a developmental lift and uh, we'll see how it goes. I may play around with some more wider grip stuff because again, if my competition bench grip width is narrow, then doing close grip is just a very, very close variation of that. And I may keep that in, in a specialization block or a, or a sports form kind of block. But for general development, I think there's probably more development to be had with the wider grip bench. So anyway, that's training vlog 15. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe for all the latest content. Leave us a comment below what you want to see next and uh, submit your questions and your form checks to media at barbellmedicine.com. Make sure when you're taking a video of yourself that your entire body and the barbell is in the frame. They're in the whole lift. I just don't want to see your legs or something at the top of a deadlift. Also, women, ladies, hey, submit a video, you know? It'd be good for you, us and you, <laughs> together. Anyway, all right, thanks for tuning in. See you guys.